All right, so good evening, guys. Um, darkest dungeon tonight because RimWorld is too depressing. <laughs> uh, darkest dungeon might be depressing as well. We'll we'll see how this goes. So, darkest dungeon, of course, is uh, as the name implies, it's a it's a dungeon crawler, basically. Um, we'll we'll get into the story and in the into the whole mechanics of it uh, in a little while. So, first of all. We need to name our game, and we're gonna call this the Darkest uh, Joystick. Um, what's it called? Uh, d d d d d estate, I think it is. Right. You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient pitted cobbles of the old road. And on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. There we go. Um, fix the audio as well. As I said, this is not my day. Oh well. Which which day is actually my day? That is a that is a maybe a, a valid uh, observation or valid uh, thought there. But hey, uh, we arrive in the hamlet. Um, basically, the story is that we are the 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 heir of the old uh, master who lived in this state and. Uh, this is basically our family's uh, estate, the joystick this estate in this case. And uh, it seems that our ancestor has done some things that uh, they shouldn't have done. Dug too deeply and too greedily, and they've disturbed some ancient horror. And uh, yeah, now we have to return here and uh, basically fix this. This is the uh, tutorial. Which basically teaches us the game. Xeon, good evening. So, <laughs> so you forgot to press the button. No, I, uh, I basically got distracted and uh, uh, didn't didn't see the time. Basically, um, yeah. So sorry. Um, I I didn't forget. I was just um, otherwise occupied. Let's say. Um. Yeah, but you know, better late than never. And uh, yeah, here we are. So um, the game is, uh, yeah, it's a dungeon crawler basically. So uh, in the uh, lower right corner here, where where I'm moving the mouse cursor now, this is basically the game's map. Uh, the larger squares are rooms that we find ourselves in, like this place where our two characters are now. And the little uh, squares in between is the corridor, or it's in this case it's a road uh, that we explore. Um, this is basically our inventory or loot, let's say. And we start off with two characters, uh, Reynold and Dismas, or whatever you want to call them. Re yeah, Reynold, yeah. And, uh, whoops, the game has changed much. So this is the inventory of these guys, and these are the skills. I thought we could also open up... Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, these are the characters. Uh, so the title changed. Yeah, yeah, I did prepare it, and then again, I, yeah, and all the words. Ah, thank you, Xion. Your, 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 your belief in my ability to screw up, um, it, it, it reassures me. <laughs> right. So these are the characters, basically. Um, they have a bunch of stats. They have quirks here, both positive and negative uh, things. And uh, characters can go insane. They have like uh, all RPG characters. They have hit points and health, and they can die and whatever. 
Uh, most important to know here is one thing about these skills. These up here in the upper right corner of the inventory or the character screen are the skills of the characters. And each of these, er, why can we activate and deactivate them here? That's a little... Okay, that's interesting. So I haven't played this in a while. Uh, but yeah, basically there is a preferred position and a preferred target for each skill. And uh, these are basically the slots that the character stands in. If he stands in these two front spots, he can use a skill. And then he can use it to attack these two front uh, enemies. And each skill is different, right? So every character has skills that might be more useful at the back of the party, at the front of the party, um, and so on. So this is the positioning is a big aspect of this. There's also camping skills, which come into play much later. We're probably not going to get there tonight. All right, let's get going here. Uh, <laughs> Right, uh, so how does this work? Oh yes, we select the room we want to... Have run up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The hamlet is just ahead. So yeah, we select the room we want to walk towards. And then our characters, in this case, are walking uh, down the path or the, the corridor or whatever, depending where you are in. And yeah, oh, there's also one thing. Uh, there's a light level, um, which has uh, various effects on us. So for example, now we have a lot of light. So we are, uh, we are basically better at scouting and we are better at, um, at uh, surprising monsters. And this changes as the torches get used up. It's, uh, the game is a lot about resource management, really. And I really love this. There's, there's, well, the, first of all, the game mechanics and everything is just really well thought out. I love the graphics. And then last but not least, there is the, 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 the announcer, the writing, the narrator, which is just amazing this is just it's just incredibly well done but anyway uh enough of me waffling on let's walk down this street here well street road Dispatch this thug in brutal fashion that all may hear of your arrival yeah i mean how how can you not find that narration uh that that sort of style how can you not find that incredibly att attractive all right so dismas is a highwayman um he's your classic rogue type characters he's got a um you can see it here in the mouse over he's got a a that's called a, a grape shot blast which attacks the front three enemies uh and he's got a, a basically a dagger attack that that causes a bleed effect uh we've got one uh, brigand cutthroat here as our enemy um, so we're not gonna use the the uh, grape shot, of course. Just, whoops. Uh, let's select that. And this is just brilliant. I love it. It's just so, it's so gorgeous. The whole effects, graphics. I just, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm gushing here. I'm sorry. So all right. Um, this guy is basically dead. Uh, he's got a bleed effect on him. Um. Yeah, we can just... Well... What shall we do here? Well, let's just try and stun him. Press this uh, advantage. Give them no quarter. Well, we died from the stun, but that's fine. And we found some gold. So, the object of this is, of course, to gather resources um, to build up a party in the hamlet. Uh, this is another interesting thing. We come across these little sides or whatever interactive objects they call oh yeah curios that's it so interacting with this uh kylan good evening as interacting with this we can well if we had an object to to use on this tent uh we could put it here we don't so we can just check it out we can also select which character does it we can just gonna use renote here they left some valuables Leave it's nothing nice unchecked there is much to be found in forgotten places I love this. I, if I ever have anything that I want narrated by someone, I'm gonna hire that guy. An ambush. Send these vermin a message. The rightful owner has returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. I just love it, guys. I love it. 
All right. So here we have a slightly tougher fight. We have one enemy, which is basically uh, uh, too wide. So he's ca he counts as two positions here, uh, meaning that, um, well, yeah, this, for example, we can only use that on him, but we can't attack the smaller guy. Um, also, you see here, we surprise these guys. So that means we get a bonus round in a, in a surprise attack round where they don't you know, they can't attack us. Um, in my experience, and I haven't played this in a while, but in my experience, it's usually best to try and dispatch... Um, it's usually best to try and dispatch the the guys uh, first, basically to reduce the damage output of the enemies. That was a good hit, but we didn't apply a bleed effect on him. That's just kind of sad. Uh, I did see that we have a skill that has a uh, bonus against marked creatures, so let's see if we can actually... Okay, so we could mark the target here. Um, so, uh, Bulwark of Faith increases Torch, i.e. it increases the light level. It gives us protection and it marks the target. I'm gonna try this, you know, for the hell of it. Um, oh, we can't. Oh. No? Oh, that marks us. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. So that was a bit pointless. That's not good. Oh, yes. Also, the monsters shuffle us. Wow. Okay. Well, we're, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. All right. So we got a penalty to dodge here, uh, which is slightly... Slightly uh, annoying. Uh, we could let's just apply some more damage here. Yep, that's good. And he did get the bleed effect. Very nice. We end up doing a huge amount of damage. All right, so there's another mechanic here. I'm sorry, there's so much to explain here. So you saw maybe this little halo type effect here. Um, every character has stress. Um, that's this year. Uh, this this is a mechanic I know they changed a little bit. So I think now, for example, it's possible, like, if this gets too high, it's possible for guys to basically have a heart attack. But basically, if this fills up, we get uh, tested and we gain maybe negative quirks and so on. Or positive sometimes. Um, but yeah, basically, our characters get stressed out and the more stressed they are, the less control we have over them and the worse they're off. Okay, so, um, let's see. Mmm... Let's go and do this. Stun attack. And that worked. That's good. So stun always removes or basically prevents the next action, right? It's not just like a, a turn or whatever. It's just whenever the next action occurs, that's... Um, yeah, that's that happening. Okay. That increased the bleed effect to four points per on. That's pretty good. Uh... I'm not sure. What do I want to do here? Hmm. Is that his accusation? Yep, sure. And here he does. Alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. Oh, this narrator. If I had a thing for guys, this would just give me a hard on. I don't, so it doesn't. But it's just, he's just really good. Everything turns red. Well, Reynaud, you're gonna be fine, my friend. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Alright, so we defeated the enemies. These are our spoils. And uh, we can now return the hamlet or continue adventuring. Now we have a, a chest here. Uh, this is a standard treasure chest. Uh, we can interact with it. Now, uh, in the past, this was hard-coded to have a trap. So we're gonna risk it anyway. And it's trapped, of course. Damn it. All right, it's fine. So the little tutorial ends. 
uh, we basically uh, sell all the little treasures um, and we gain money from this. So Reynold seems to get trade here. So he um, believes he's uh, he believes he's possessed by demons, and uh, yeah, he loses stress or he, he gains less strain stress exploring the ruins. So he gains two of these actually. All right, let's go to the hamlet. Ah. Welcome home, such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. Yes, yeah, these corrupted lands. Yep. Uh, do you guys see a theme? You know, we land on, on inhospitable rim worlds full of dangers, you know, and then, okay, we say, all right, enough of the space thing. Uh, so let's maybe, you know, visit our ancestors' lands. And of course, they're cursed, you know, it's. it's we don't really have a lot of luck with our excursions right now. Anyway, so this is the activity lock. Uh, we get one every week. Basically, every expedition takes a week. Um, so, yeah, they both level up. Um, that's pretty much all that happened here. Uh, we have a quest lock. This is... Wow, this is longer than my arm. Um, but, okay. So, successfully complete your first foray into the ruins, for example. All right, that's something to do. So, yeah, 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 okay. Shush, go away, help topic. All right, so this is the hamlet. There's a lot of things to do here. Um, more quests. Oh, the stagecoach here. All right, so the stagecoach is the first thing we're going to look at. This is Women where we... and men, soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. All right, so we've cleared the road and the stagecoach, uh, which we arrived in, and it, you know, it, it basically crashed, and, and uh, we had to fight the, the rest of our way here. But now the road is clear, and uh, this means new recruits will arrive here every every week. And there are two recruits here, which is good because we need four to complete the party. Uh, we got a priest here, basically. A sister of battle, pious and unrelenting, and a uh, plague doctor. What better laboratory than the blood-soaked battlefield? All right, cool. Um, this is what we need the resources for. We can basically upgrade all the buildings in the hamlet. Uh, not all of them are unlocked yet, but for example, uh, we can increase our ro the size of our roster. Right now we can have nine guys maximum. We could increase that, um, which is probably a good idea sooner or later. Um, one of the f things I, and again, uh, you know, I haven't played this in a while, so this might not be a very viable strategy. But one thing I like to do is um, basically increase the size of the stagecoach network, network at least once, right off the top, just to get a little more, a, le a few more recruits here. Uh, because in this game, our characters will die. They will become unavailable for, mostly for the reasons of stress. Um, and, uh, yeah, you basically want to have a sizable roster. We don't have to fill it up, but basically having like, let's say two full teams at the very least, maybe three um, later on with specialities. You know, you might want to have a team that's very good at fighting in the ruins and one that's very good at fighting somewhere else. Uh, let's see what else is uh, available. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Oh, yeah, this is, um, right, so this is basically uh, where we can replay uh, things uh, where our records are. Um, there's, um, we saw this at the beginning. Uh, this is the introduction that tells us the story uh, when we start the game. We didn't see this cinematic uh, because it started, you know, when I started the game before I streamed it. Um, there's the graveyard. Most will end up here, covered in the poisoned earth awaiting merciful oblivion but yeah we haven't had any deaths yet and i think everything else is locked for now so we gotta embark on our first adventure right away we have four people so let's do this a mecca of madness and morbidity your work begins right so um 
we have oh we actually do need to work on the oh? really we could go to the darkest dungeon right away that's interesting All right but you want to start off i guess with the <laughs> with the ruins just hmm I wonder why we have to uh, complete the ruins first to go to all these places. But the darkest dungeon itself, the uh, you know name giving dungeon, that's available right away. It's level six, so our guys would not survive there. I wonder if this is a bug. It doesn't really matter. Um, all right, so let's get these guys in. Right now, um, I think we want. Yeah, I think we want this. Again, we need to make sure uh, to organize these guys by the positions they can act from. So, yeah, this mass, uh, the, the Highway Man on the second, and what's the name? Bigot. Um, in third space, and then the Plague Doctor uh, in fourth. Is a fairly standard setup, I believe, for the first party. All right, uh, this will do. Um, oh yes, so this qu quest here is explore 90% of the rooms and this is the reward we get if we complete this. We can abort the, 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 the thing first or earlier and then we'll just get basically all loots. Right. The cost of preparedness measured now in gold, later in blood. In blood. Uh, right, okay, so this is uh, the, the outfitter, the provisioner. Um, there are several things we want to take with us. So first of all, uh, oops, uh, a bunch of torches and some provisions, some food. Um, it's usually a good idea to also bring at least one shovel. Um, all of this, of course, costs gold. So we may need to make sure to spend less here than we will ultimately earn. So I'm going to be a little, um, a little reluctant to spend too much. Uh, interesting enough, we start off with the holy water and the anti-venom, which I don't remember doing or happening. Uh, everything else I think we can do without for now. We could take a second shovel, it could take some more food, but I think for our first adventure this is going to be okay. Uh, again, I might be under under provisioning here because I haven't played in a while, but I think we, we, we should manage. Uh, so let's go. Mm -hmm.